Vitamin C, whole food versus synthetic, does it matter? Debunking the myth that vitamin C in plant foods is found in a special tyrosinase complex. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences, and we're going to look at the topic of whole food versus synthetic vitamin C. Many people argue that whole food vitamin C is fundamentally different from ascorbic acid. While whole food vitamin C is preferable because whole foods provide many important nutrients, whole food vitamin C is not something fundamentally different from ascorbic acid. So as an example of this claim, Morley Robbins writes in Cure Your Fatigue, real vitamin C as it occurs in nature, food-based, is like a complete car that has an engine, a steering wheel, four wheels, and a shell. And in that whole food vitamin C complex, the engine is an enzyme called tyrosinase, which is one of the most important copper-based enzymes in our body. Compared to the real vitamin C complex, ascorbic acid and ascorbate simply are the shell of the car without the engine, nor any other moving parts nor is the tyrosinase enzyme all that synthetic vitamin C is lacking. It also lacks the polyphenols, rutin, and flavonone glycoside hesperidin, sometimes referred together as vitamin P, vitamin K, and factor J, choline, all of which are found in whole food vitamin C complex, and along with tyrosinase are essential cofactor nutrients that work synergistically with ascorbigen, the natural form of L-ascorbic acid that whole food vitamin C complex also contains. Without these essential cofactors, L-ascorbic acid cannot be absorbed, which is why 90% of synthetic vitamin C supplements are rapidly excreted by the body soon after they are consumed. That should suffice to prove that the human body does not want synthetic vitamin C. End quote. None of this makes any sense. In plants, vitamin K is bound in the photosystem complex as this part of the machinery of photosynthesis and vitamin C is not. The best plant sources of choline are nuts and seeds, which have among the least vitamin C. Flavonoids universally have low absorption and are treated as xenobiotics, like toxins and drugs, to be eliminated from the body. Rutin from onions, for example, is about 7% absorbed and then metabolized. By contrast, 70 to 90% of ascorbic acid is absorbed at doses in the hundreds of milligrams, and this falls to 50% at doses higher than one gram. Urinary loss of ascorbic acid is minimal until intakes reach 80 milligrams per day and then increases proportional to the dose thereafter. The benefits of flavonoids are mediated primarily through the principle of hormesis, which is the principle that a little of something bad for you can be good for you by improving your defenses. The benefits of vitamin C, by contrast, are that it is an essential cofactor for many enzymes and a critical part of the antioxidant system. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, cannot possibly be found universally in a complex with tyrosinase. It's not possible. First, ascorbic acid does not form complexes with enzymes for which it is a cofactor. Some nutrients do. For example, riboflavin is usually present as FAD in a prosthetic group that is complex to the enzyme that would have to be dissociated during digestion. Vitamin C, by contrast, is a soluble redox factor that travels between different enzymes or other substrates, transferring electrons from one to another. Second, ascorbic acid is a cofactor for many different enzymes in plants, but not for tyrosinase. It is a cofactor for ferric chelate reductase, Viola xanthin desoxidase, which converts viola xanthin to zeaxanthin, which protects photosystem 2 from photoinhibition by dissipating excess excitation energy. It's a cofactor for l aminocyclopropane one carboxylic acid oxidase, which is involved in the synthesis of the plant hormone ethylene. It's a cofactor for ascorbate oxidase, which has a role in cell division, and ascorbate peroxidase, which converts hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen, and to monodehydroascorbate reductase, which recycles it. And then also there are hypothesized roles in the synthesis of abscisic acid, giparellins, and the catabolism of auxins. Ascorbic acid is also a direct antioxidant and electron donor to photosystems and the respiratory chain, especially under stress conditions. It is ubiquitously found in all plant tissues except seeds that mature in a highly dehydrated state. Its concentrations correlate mainly with phot photosynthetic activity. Now, there's a part, a paper linked in the, in the written article version of this. You can go to the description, click on the link, and you'll see the references here. It's called Compartment-Specific Importance of Ascorbate During Environmental Stress in Plants. And it shows that the highest concentrations of vitamin C are in the peroxisomes and the cytosol, the lowest in the vacuoles, and all other organelles are intermediate. The crystal structure of the tyrosinase enzyme has been published and it contains copper, but not vitamin C. In fact, vitamin C inhibits tyrosinase. In Cure Your Fatigue, how balancing three minerals and one protein is the solution that you're looking for, Robin cites this paper showing that ascorbic acid is capable of breaking down cerebral plasmin. 
It's called Investigations into Serum Copper 2, Isolation of the Copper-Containing Protein and a Description of Some of Its Properties. What they actually found was not that ascorbic acid breaks down cellular plasma, but rather that it could be reduced, meaning cellular plasma could be reduced using vitamin C, which was, quote, completely reversible in the presence of oxygen, end quote. He cites another study showing that vitamin C can reduce copper and cellular plasma, plasma in the serum. The design of the study is poor and there's no proper control, but it suggests that taking 500 milligrams of vitamin C every day with each of three meals for a total of 1,500 milligrams per day can decrease serum copper by about 5% and cellular plasma by about 25% over two months. The way around that is to not take vitamin C with the meal, take it in between the meal. Ascorbic acid can donate electrons, and as such, it can shift iron and copper into oxidation states such that copper absorption is inhibited and the absorption of plant iron is enhanced. Ascorbic acid can also shift oxidation states of these minerals inside the body, and this can remove copper from cellular plasma and help deliver it to cells, but can interact with overloaded iron by making it more likely to cause oxidative stress. All of these flow straightforwardly from vitamin C as a reductant, that is, an electron donor. And there's no evidence whatsoever that natural vitamin C from plant or animal foods has a different structure than synthetic ascorbic acid. One good reason to avoid a synthetic ascorbic acid is that it's made from GMO corn and probably contaminated with glyphosate. You can find non-GMO ascorbate on Amazon. The main reason to use whole food vitamin C, though, is that no one needs more than 200 to 400 milligrams per day, except in the cases of sepsis or chemotherapy, and this is easily and affordably gotten from food or whole food supplements, which contain many other nutrients that have many benefits, and it is very likely that there's value in having some of them balanced with the vitamin C. Now, I have several articles and videos for you. Go to the link in the description. You'll see the link to the written version of this that has all the references. Also, check out the powerful duo, how glutathione and vitamin C IV drips impact cancer, and cancer IV drips and the glutathione vitamin C connection. The first one they cover similar topics. The first one is very short. The second one is long form. Check those out for lots of information on vitamin C guidelines for dosing and balancing with other nutrients.